Hi everyone, this is pre-algebra. Lesson 7-6, connect proportional relationships and slope. In this lesson, we'll be able to understand the slope of a line. Let's start with solve and discuss it. In the fall, Rashida earns money as a soccer referee for her town's um, under 10 soccer league. So far, she has worked five games and has been paid $98.5. She'll work a total of 14 games this fall. How can Rashida determine how much she'll earn refereeing soccer games this fall? Okay, so look for relationships. How is the number of games Rashida works related to her earnings? So let's start with identifying some important information. So under 10 soccer league, is that important? Not really. You just know that it's, it's, a, it's a soccer league that's for kids under 10, okay? But she's worked five games, so that's important. It's been paid $98.5. And she'll work a total of 14 games this fall. So every game, how much, how much does it cost? How much does she earn every game is the question. So X could be the number of uh, dollars she earns um, per game, okay? So how can we write an expression? Five times how much it, it, she earns per game uh, should be 98.5. So we can figure out that X is going to be 98.5 divided by five, right? So X is, let's see, um, 98.5 divided by five is 19.7. So how much will she earn refereeing soccer games, 14, 14 soccer games this fall. So 14X is gonna be your answer, right? So 14 times 19.5 is the total amount she's gonna earn this fall, which is $275.8. She will earn $275.8 for 14 games. Okay, that's what it means. All right, so just like this, it's easier if you set up an expression and solve for the variable um, and figure out the information. Focus on math practices. How would Rashida's earnings change if she were paid by the hour instead of by the game? So what if she earns money every hour instead of a fixed price for the game? Well, we don't know how much money she's gonna earn per hour, like how it's gonna change, but how do you know it's gonna change? Well, we know that the amount she earns could change from game to game because every game could be different hours that she uh, that she works, right? But soccer games usually last about the same amount of time. So it might not change too much, but it does it does vary. Okay. All right, next page, example one. Um, we're gonna think about slope today. So think about what slope, understanding slope in example one. Maya and her father are building a tree house. A roof will have a nine to 12 pitch. That is for every 12 inches of horizontal distance, the roof rises nine inches. So every um, every 12 inches, roof uh, rises nine inches. How can Maya determine the height of the roof at its peak? So 12 inches 
is equal to how many feet? One foot, okay? So that's gonna be one foot per nine inch. So six foot means how many nine inches do you have? Six, right? So 12 times, wait, wait, wait no, no, no. Six times nine is 54. So that's 54 inches that you need to go up. What's 54 inches in foot? You divide it by 12. 54 inches times 12 inches per one foot means you divide 54 by 12 and you should have 4.5 foot. So in inches, you rise 54 inches. Um, by foot, you rise 4.5 feet um, if, you, if your horizontal distance is six feet, okay? So you can also use a table and proportions to figure out how many vertical, how much vertical distance do we have for every horizontal distance and figure out six feet is gonna be six times 12, which is gonna be 72. Okay, six feet is 72 inches. So you wanna know how much the vertical distance is for 72 inches, okay? You can draw a graph and figure out what point on the line corresponds to 72. And then figure out your, your um, vertical. Because that's in inches and that's in inches. They're both in inches, right? So 72 So that's by six, right? So that's 54 and then 66 and 72. So 72 is gonna be this point. And that's also 54. So this point is 72 comma 54. So that means for 72 inches horizontal distance, we rise 54 inches vertically. Okay, so that's what we figured out. But looking at the graph, it's much easier to just point, uh, to figure out a point, point out the point and interpret, okay? So let's look at try it. Jack graphs how, how far he plans to bike over a three-day charity ride. Find the slope of the line. Slope is going to be the rise over run. So the rise is your y, your distance, your change in y over run is change in x, so horizontally. And this is vertical movement, okay? So the slope, how, how much do we have? Um, we run, this is one day, right? One day. And then that's how much? From 60 to 90, how much did we rise up? Plus 30, right? Plus one day, plus 30. So rise is 30, 30 miles per one day. So the slope of the line here is just simply 30, okay? That's our slope, the rise over run, okay? Even if we count this two, these two points, we rise up, Let's use a different color, okay? If we choose these two points and count the slope, it should be the same because we rise up 60 miles per one, two, two days. And 60 miles per two days is also equal to 30 miles per day. So the slope is still the same, okay? So convince me, how do the unit rate and constant of proportionality relate to the slope of a line? Do you remember the unit rate, the constant of proportionality? The constant of proportionality K is in the equation Y equals KX, where this is your slope. The unit rate is your, 
your rate when your denominator is equal to one. So unit rate and constant proportionality together makes a slope as well. The values are the same. So they're all different names for the slope. Does that make sense? The unit rate, uh, constant, uh, the unit rate and the constant of proportionality are all different names for the slope. So the values are All right, example two on the next page. Find the slope from two points, okay? So this graph represents the depth of a diving submarine over time. At what speed is the submarine descending? So your time is in minutes. Every minute you're descending, um, how much is what you are trying to get? That's your slope, right? Every unit for a vertical um, unit is negative 100. That's negative 300, negative 500 and so on. So the slope is also uh, it is also figured out by two points. You have a slope equation. If you have two points, x comma y, right, and x comma y, we can differentiate these two points by putting a name on it. This is the first point, and that's your second point. Then you can subtract the y values so that we get the difference between the y values and get the, hard, the vertical distance, right? y sub two minus y sub one is the difference between these two points. So this, so this y sub two is the vertical distance of y sub two is this one, right? Of this point. Minus the vertical distance of this one gives you this one, right? y sub two minus y sub one. What about the horizontal distance? Same thing. The, y, the x sub two is the horizontal distance from, from zero to this point, right? Minus x sub one, zero to this distance is your horizontal distance between these two points, x sub two minus x sub one. Does that make sense? So if you have any two points, you can subtract the y's, y values and the x values to get the slope and your y values go up, your x values go down, okay? It's a very common mistake that you look at your point x comma y and put x on the top, y values on the bottom, but no, it's the other way. Always remember slope is rise over run, vertical over horizontal, okay? So negative 800, this is um, this is 10 comma negative 800. And this point is five comma negative 400. So we're gonna subtract them. Negative 800 minus negative 400 is negative 800 plus 400. So that's negative 400. Then 10 minus five is in the denominator for your X values, you get five. To simplify, negative 400 divided by five is negative 80. So the slope of the line is negative 80, okay? The submarine is descending at a rate of 80 feet per minute. So if you look at this graph, it looks like your point could be uh, negative 100 per minute. But if you follow this point, it doesn't exactly go with that slope, okay? Is it, is your slope, if your slope looks similar here, it doesn't mean it's gonna continue that rate. You need to look at the other points on the line as well, okay? So please be careful. The most exact way is to find out two exact points and figure out the slope using the slope formula, okay? So this is when the slope is negative, negative 80. How do the x and y coordinates relate when the slope is negative? It seems like as time goes, the further the time is, your y value, your depth decreases, right? Because submarine is going below, down, 
right? If your slope is positive as x increases, y also increases. It goes up together, okay? But when your slope is negative, that means as your x um, increases from left to right, your y decreases. There are different directions, okay? As, so let's write that down. As x increases, y values decrease. Okay, example three, interpret slope. The graph shows the distance a car travels over time. Find the slope of the line. What does it mean in the problem situation? So after you find the slope, we're gonna try to think about what it means, okay? So let's figure out the slope. First, we're gonna figure out the vertical over horizontal, right? Slope is vertical over horizontal. So the vertical distance is 220 minus 110, okay? This is 220 minus 110, uh, 110. And then this horizontal is four minus two. So that's equal to two, and this is equal to uh, 110. So 110, divided by two is 55. The slope of the line is 55. What does that mean? Your horizontal, rep, uh, horizontal distance represents distance in miles. Your, your, um, that's vertical. And horizontal, horizontal distance represents time in hours, right? So this is miles over hours. So that means 55 miles per hour. Okay, so the car travels 55 miles per hour is the complete interpretation of your slope here. Okay, good. Let's look at try. The graph shows the proportions of red and blue food coloring um, that Taylor mixes to make purple frosting. What is the slope of the line? Tell what it means in the problem situation. So first, figure out the slope. Your slope is the difference of y over x. So your y value, your vertical distance, is going to be 70 minus 35, right? Your y values. And then your horizontal distance, this one, is 50 minus 25. That's 50, right? 50 minus 25. That's equal to 25. And your horizontal distance is equal to 35, okay, exactly in half. And so what does that mean? Your slope is rise over run. So change in y over change in x, that's equal to 35 over 25. Because 70, okay, let me not skip the steps. Let me write down all the steps. 70 minus 35 over uh, 50 minus 25 is equal to 35 over 25, okay? And then you simplify, seven over five. Your slope is seven over five. And so that means, how do you interpret the slope? Number of blue drops per number of red drops. So that's number of blue drops per number of red drops. Wait, no. no, 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 your vertical is number of red drops. So number of red drops, seven red drops per number of blue drops, five blue drops, okay? Let's summarize and write it down. Um, the slope is seven over five. 1.4. It means that for every five drops of blue food coloring, Taylor adds seven drops of red to be the other way. Okay. It means that for every seven drops of red food coloring, Taylor adds five drops of blue food coloring. Okay. All right, 
Let's summarize the lesson. Slope, what is slope? Slope is a measure of the steepness of a line. It determines how steep your line is. It represents the ratio of rise, that is the vertical distance, to the run, the horizontal distance, between two points on the line. In proportional relationships, slope is the same as the unit rate and, cons and the constant of proportionality. In a proportional relationship, y equals kx. Okay, so for example, in a theater price, your X, your horizontal distance represents the number of tickets, your Y represents the cost in dollars, so your rise between these two points is going to be 30, run is 2, so your um, slope is going to be 15, 30 over 2 is 15, so every ticket costs $15 is what your slope means. All right, guys, that was lesson 7-6, connect proportion relationships and slope. In the next lesson, we'll learn about analyzing linear equations, y equals mx. So we'll learn more about y equals mx um, in the next lesson. If you have any more questions, please ask Ms. King in class. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.